Hey, you, called the rider as he tossed the reins over the head of his horse. Here's a horse that needs iron on his feet. Fix him up, and look here. He lifted a forefoot and showed the scales on the frog and sole of the hoof. Last time you shooed this horse, you done a sloppy job, son. You left all this stuff hanging on here. I want it trimmed off, nice and neat, you hear? The blacksmith shrugged his shoulders. Spoils the hoof to put the knife on the sole, Buck, said the smith. That peels off natural. Hmph, said Buck Heath. How old are you, son? Oh, old enough, answered Andy cheerily. Old enough to know that this exfoliation is entirely natural. The big word stuck in the craw of Buck Heath, who brought his thick eyebrows together. I've rid horses off and on come twenty-five years, he declared. And I've rid them long enough to know how I want them shod. This is my horse, son, and you do it my way, that's straight. The eye of old Jasper in the rear of the shop grew dim with wistfulness as he heard this talk. He knew Buck Heath. He knew his kind. In his day, he would have eaten a dozen men of such rough words and such mild deeds as Buck. But searching the face of Andy, he saw no resentment, merely a quiet resignation. Another thing, said Buck Heath, who seemed determined to press the thing to a disagreeable point. I hear you don't fit your shoes on hot. Well, I never touch a hoof with hot iron, replied Andy. It's a rotten practice. Is it? said Buck Heath coldly. Well, son, you fit my horse with hot shoes or I'll know the reason why. I've got to do the work my own way, protested Andy. A spark of hope burned in Jasper. Otherwise, I can go find another gent to do my shoeing, inquired Buck. It looks that way, replied the blacksmith with a nod. Well, said Buck, whose mildness of the last question had been merely the cover for a burst in wrath that now sent his voice booming. Maybe you know a whole pile, boy. I hear Jasper has give you considerable education, but what you know is plumb wasted on me, understand? As for looking up another blacksmith, you ought to know there ain't another shop in ten miles. You'll do this job, and you'll do it my way. Maybe you got another way of thinking. There was a little pause. It's your horse, repeated Andy. I suppose I can do him your own way. Old Jasper closed his eyes in silent agony. Looking again, he saw Buck Heath grinning with contempt. And for a single moment, Jasper touched his gun. Then he remembered that he was seventy years old. Well, Buck, he said, coming forward, for he felt that if this scene continued, he would go mad with shame. There was a great change in Buck as he heard this voice. A marked respect was in his manner as he turned to Jasper. Hello, Jas, he said. I didn't know you was here. Come over to the saloon, Buck, and have one on me, said Jasper. I guess Andy will have your horse ready when we come back. Speaking personal, said Buck Heath with much heartiness. I don't pass up no chances with no man, in particular if he's Jasper Lanning. He hooked his arm through Jasper's elbow. Besides, that boy of yours has got me all heated up. Where'd he learn them man-sized words, Jas? All of which Andy heard, and he knew that Buck Heath intended him to hear them. It made Andy frown. And for an instant he thought of calling Buck back, but he did not call. Instead, he imagined what would happen. Buck would turn on his heel and stand, towering in the door. He would ask what Andy wanted. Andy chose the careful insult which he would throw in Buck's face. He saw the blow given. He felt his own fist tingle as he returned the effort with interest. He saw Buck tumble back over the bucket of water. By this time, Andy was smiling gently to himself. His wrath had dissolved, and he was humming pleasantly to himself as he began to pull off the worn shoes of Buck's horse. <laughs>